The lifespan for the general population of males born in 1980 is 77 years old. A worker for the Census Bureau claims that the average lifespan for college professors is greater than 77. A random sample of 17 deceased college professors had a mean lifespan of 89 and a standard deviation of 9.5 years. Use a significance level of 10% to test the Census Bureau worker's claim. If a politician criticizes the results of the test on the grounds that the sample was too small, is that criticism valid here? Okay, so let's work out this problem by first identifying what the key phrase is that tells us what to do. So it says here, to test the Census Bureau worker's claim. So what we want to do here is conduct a hypothesis test of the Census Bureau, Census Bureau worker's claim. So let's identify that claim as our first step. So it says here that the worker for the Census Bureau claims the average is greater than 77. So the average lifespan is greater than 77 for college professors. That's what the Census Bureau worker claims. Okay, step two. Once you identify the claim, you want to get your competing pair of hypotheses. That's HO and HA. So let's get those. Let's look at the claim to determine those. The claim uses the symbol greater than. That's one of HA's symbols. That means that HA is the same as the claim in this instance. So the mean is greater than 77 is our HA, and HO will have to be the opposite of that. So if you're not, if the mean is not greater than 77, it must be less than or equal to 77. Okay, let's go to step three. Step three is our data step. This is the step where we record all the data that's given to us in the problem that helps us calculate our test stat. So for a test about the mean, we're usually given n, x bar, a standard deviation, and alpha. Okay, so let's get our n for the problem. It says here that a random sample of 17 deceased college professors, so n is 17, that's our sample size. They had a mean lifespan of 89 and a standard deviation of 9.5. Then use the significance level to test the claim, 10% significance level. So we're going to use 10% here for alpha. Okay, so once you have your data, your next step after that is to go ahead and use that data to um, calculate your test stat. So let's do our test stat up here. For a test about the mean, when the sample size is small, we will use the test stat formula T is equal to x bar minus mu sub zero s divided by the square root of n. Okay, so now that we have that, we're just going to plug in the numbers. x bar is 89 minus this number, right? The mu sub zero, that comes from HO, that's going to be 77. So the number we get from HO's claim, right? Then s is 9.5. And then we plug in the square root of n, which is the square root of 17 here. Okay, so let's work that out and see what we get. So we'll have 89 minus 77 divided by 9.5 divided by the square root of 17. And if you're going to do that all at once, don't forget to put um, your top and bottom parts of that fraction in parentheses. All right, when you're done, you get a very large test stat. We get a test stat of... 5.21 when I round off to the hundredths place. 5.21. Okay, now that we have our test stat. And by the way, that's a large test stat. It's most likely going to reject HO because it's pretty extreme. But uh, let's confirm that by calculating the critical value, right? So the critical value is our fifth step in the process. And when we do our critical value, we want to go ahead and draw a bell curve, right? So draw a bell curve. Label the number line at the bottom T, since this is a small sample T test. And what we're going to do now from there is to look at HA and determine whether it's a right tail test, left tail test, or two tail test. Because that greater than symbol is a right tail test, or that's like an arrow pointing to the right, indicates a right tail test. Okay, so if our test stat lands here, we're going to reject HO. If it lands here, we're going to say, do not reject HO, right? Question is, where's the cutoff? What Z, what T score, T value starts this rejection region? That's what we're trying to figure out, right? Okay, in order to determine that, we're going to have to look up 
alpha under 16 degrees of freedom. So remember that if it's a one tail test, we look up alpha on the t-table, and the degrees of freedom is just n minus one. So 16 degrees of freedom because n is 17, we look up alpha because it's a one tail test, we look up alpha. If it had been two tails, we look up alpha divided by two. All right, so let's go to our t-table now and get our critical t-value. Okay, so we're looking at 0.10 and 16 degrees of freedom. So there's the 0 0.10 column, the first column. We're gonna scroll till we see 16 degrees of freedom. So it's right there, we find the answer 1.337. Okay, so we get the answer 1.337 for our critical value, 1.337. Okay, so now that we have our critical value, it's time to compare that critical value to our test stat. If our test stat is larger than it, we'll be in the rejection region on the number line and we'll be forced to reject HO. And we of course see that this is over here, right, on the number line, it'd be to the right of 1.337. That indicates we should reject HO. So we've now formed the base of our, basis of our initial conclusion, step six. That initial conclusion is namely to reject HO. So the initial conclusion is going to be that we should reject HO and therefore support HA. Remember these go hand in hand. If you reject HO, you're supporting HA. All right, now we wanna go back to our original claim to get the wording of our final um, step to the problem. So the final step to the problem, step seven, and requires us to word the conclusion, right? So we're gonna look at the claim and ask yourself, what hypothesis was the claim? In this case, it was HA, so we should use the wording that's attached to HA, which says that we support. So we're gonna write the sample data support the claim. The sample data support the Census Bureau workers claim. Dot, dot, dot. What was his claim? His claim was that the average lifetime for college professors is greater than 77 years. All right, good. Now, um, let's address the final thing, this thing that I penciled in here at the bottom. It says, if a politician criticizes the results of the test on the grounds that the sample was too small, is that criticism valid here? And the answer to that is no. The reason why it's not valid here is because in this case, we're able to reject HO. We saw in an earlier problem that um, when we weren't able to reject HO, you can criticize the t-test then as you know basically being too weak potentially. Because the problem with a t-test is that because of the small sample size, the test is a little less powerful than the z-test. What that means is that the t-test has a harder time rejecting HO. So when it fails to reject HO, when it's unable to reject HO, people can criticize it rightly and say, well, maybe it couldn't reject HO because it's a weaker test. Perhaps if you used a larger sample size, therefore used a Z test, you would be able to actually reject HO. <clears throat> so when you're unable to reject HO, you have to consider the possibility with the T test that a larger sample size, or in other words, a Z test would do the job. However, in this scenario, that's not our problem, right? We've rejected HO. We didn't fail to reject HO. We were able to reject HO. In fact, this uh, test stat is pretty extreme. So this small sample size here did its job just fine. Our goal was to reject HO. We were able to do that. And at this point, there's no criticism of T. You know, essentially T is strong enough to do the job. A Z test would conclude basically the same thing most of the time. <clears throat> there are some exceptions where we might commit an error, but generally speaking, um, if the T test can reject HO, the Z test would also reject HO. And so there's no criticism of the t-test here that would be valid. So to help you understand this, try to think of an analogy. Um, think of using a pair of binoculars to try to identify the rings of Saturn. You know, you might put the binoculars up to your face and look at the place in the sky where Saturn is supposed to be, and you might say, "Hmm, you know, I, I don't see the rings." If that's the case, you know, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that Saturn doesn't actually have rings, right? It could just mean that your binoculars are too weak to see them, right? So maybe you need to whip out a more powerful telescope to be able to view those rings. And you might find that the telescope does in fact see them. 
Now, compare that to the scenario where you put the, the binoculars to your eyes, you look where Saturn is supposed to be in the sky, and you see the rings of Saturn with the binoculars. At that point, you know, you have no need to go out and get a more powerful tool. It's not necessary because the binoculars are doing the job you set out to do. That was to view the rings of Saturn. The binoculars are powerful enough. They're not the most powerful things you could use to view the rings, but if they do the job, then there can't be, they can't be criticized for being too weak. And that's like our t-test here. It did its job. We don't need a more powerful test to show that this null hypothesis is false. It looks like based on this data and uh, you know this test statistic, we can clearly reject HO, so we don't have a need for a more powerful test to do that. So essentially the politician's uh, criticism is not valid here.